Good morning, John Hoyt here again with strategies and tactics that you can implement to help secure your business, your, your home, your family, um, really anywhere. These can be applied and you know they may not be easy to apply, but they are sound strategies, uh, sound tactics that you can implement. Um, today I want to talk to you about um, disabling God mode. So, you know, I remember uh, back in the 90s, maybe 94 time frame, and when I had my first PC, a Packard Bell 486, <clears throat> and my dad had got me this, this PC, and I was super excited about it, um, Windows 311, and he had brought me home a stack of uh, floppy disks and for you younger folks it was like a big stack of save icons you know just about maybe about yay big um and you know on this big stack of disks or you know, this was uh, a game called doom um and i didn't know anything about doom doom you know at that time was pretty was new probably um by the time i had heard about it <clears throat> but my dad was like hey the guys at work um, said you might like this. It's a, it's a PC game. So loaded all those floppy disks on, installed the game, and yes, it was really cool. Uh, we got you know hooked onto it very quickly. Um, you know, just super fun. Just something totally different from like uh, a Nintendo game, right? It was gaming on the PC, and and I was definitely hooked. Um, and that game, you know, it's just like a lot of those games, um, there's not a lot of mercy, you know, there's not a lot of giving, you have to fight your way and you die a lot. Um, and somehow, some way, I don't remember if it was through, um, somebody, you know, going online and looking through this or somebody told me about this, but I found, um, the cheat codes, right? And that was another awesome thing about PC gaming, uh, were the cheat codes. And man, it's like you need more ammo. You need you need uh, you need a better bigger gun. You need all the guns. You need all the keys. Um, and then there was the one mode, IDDQD, that you could enable that would enable God mode. And the cool thing about that was like, you know, the guy's face, the the Space Marine, his eyes turn yellow, and you you're yellow or white, and you knew you were in God mode, and you're invincible. And so you just like you know, just run rampant. You're like, okay, this guy's, the, the, you know, his monsters, demons that were killing me, not, no more, right? And that was awesome. Um, and how does that relate to cybersecurity? Well, a lot of people are running, running a lot of their stuff in God mode, right? They, they run a lot of their equipment, their desktops, um, their, their applications, their systems, they're using God mode. <clears throat> and, you know, what I mean by that is they're running with admin privileges. Their local users are admin. Um, everybody's an admin. Everybody, you get God mode, you get God mode, you get God mode, right? Uh, everybody get, gets the cheat code. And, and the reason, why do they do that? Well, the reason they do that is because, you know, you get a phone call. Hey, I can't install this. Hey, I'm trying to change this setting. And it, it just becomes a headache, especially as a, a business owner or a small, medium business owner. And you're like, look, I just, I can't go take time, all the time away um, to go help them install an application. Well, what does that, what does that cause? Well, that causes the, it's the, the flexibility versus security argument, right? Where um, you're, what, you're making the flexibility very high, you know, which makes your life easier, but your security is very low, right? That, that seesaw. <clears throat> so you've enabled God mode on all your endpoints and then you're surprised when they all get compromised or when that one of them just gets totally compromised. And then if that machines then could be used to compromise other machines because, Hey, I've got God mode privileges on this box. Well, guess what? A lot of times that means you have God mode on all the boxes. The cheat code works on everything. And you think about it, you know, this back to the password, uh, using good passwords, using unique passwords. Um, a lot of times God mode, the cheat code is enabled. And if you know the cheat code, 
you can use it on everything. Um, which that's really a, can lead to a lot of problems like ransomware that once they are able to compromise one endpoint, it's just a domino effect to affect everything, right? So, you know, it's a balance, you know, but why, why does it not enabling God mode help? Well, if you don't enable God mode on all your endpoints, at least, um, then when that malicious software lands or, you know, fish, they get fish, whatever, um, well, maybe not fishing quite so much, but say that they get compromised, that endpoint gets compromised, the desktop, the laptop. Well, it's a lot harder for them to use that machine to, to escalate, well, to get on the whole box, right? They have to be able to compromise the whole system and then use those privileges to bounce around throughout the, the network. Now, if they don't have God mode, if they wanted to, say, run ransomware, it's a lot more difficult because, you know, it's not in, by default going to allow them to run it typically or install something or to af affect all the files you know, it's going to be restricted to what that system's, that user's access is. You know, you're, you're minimizing the damage, you're minimizing the scope that damage can, uh, you know, that something malicious can cause damage to. Um, so that's it. You're just, you're reducing the impact that if something is compromised, that they can use those privileges right away to cause more of a dam more damage and more of an impact. Um, now, you know, another way to call this is least privilege, right? And it could be not so much as allowing your users to have admin or be admins. Least privilege. It's really least privilege, uh, you know, is is just the way to think about it for other things like applications, users to applications. Um, you know, people want, they want all the access. I get it. You know, they want to be able to do whatever they want to do just in case. And we run into that all the time where, well, what happens at 3 a.m.? And we need to be able to do this. And we don't have access. You know, well, that's their thinking. And they, and what they then they use that to justify more privileges. And, you know, we have to combat that with, you know, if you're a security person or even if you're just conscientious of, look, you, you only need the privileges that you need to do the job because that means you're less of a liability, you're less of a risk to say worst case scenario, you get compromised for some reason. Now that means there's less of a chance that you your credentials or your account could be used to cause higher impact. Um, and, and they don't wanna hear that, right? People don't wanna hear that. They just wanna be able to do what they wanna do when they wanna do it in case they want it, in case they need to do it. Um, but you just, you know, just gotta hold the line. This is one of those things you gotta hold the line and be like, look, I know it's not as convenient, right? But it's just where, what we're going to stick to. It's our policy is to do least privilege, to not enable God mode for everything for everybody. Um, and it's it's a basic fundamental. It's not easy, which a lot of these fundamentals are not easy to implement. But really, you know, minimum cost, right? You, you really. It could be zero cost, not zero, but it's practically zero cost if you're not so large that managing it is such a big deal, right? It's more about dealing with the time cost if there is something you have to go help out with, if the user can't do something that they want to be able to do or the application uh, user wants to be able to do something. Um, yeah, I get it. You know, I know time is money, right? So there's a balance. Just don't enable God mode for everything. Don't get every, don't give everybody the cheat code. That's what I would ask is don't give everybody the cheat code only where you have to, only where it's just like, look, we tried everything. This person still needs to have this level of access. Um, and we were trying to, and if then that's the case, look for ways to mitigate that risk. Enable two factor for that user. Even though they have God mode, in order to get to that level of God mode, they have to put in, you know, they have to use two-factor to get there. You know, so look for ways to mitigate it. If you have to use God mode for users or for specific use cases, just try to look for the risk, the ways to reduce that risk. Um, so, yeah, IDDQD, still, still awesome. I still love cheat codes. Um, but, you know, you got to be practical. You got to think through what, what's the worst case scenario that could happen I know it makes your life easier because you don't have to worry about it as much, 
um, as far as like them bugging you because they can do what they want to do. But in the long run, what could happen and, and the worst case scenario it could be really bad. And you know, you look back and you're like, well, they, they needed to have that level of access. If you really look hard at it, you, they probably don't need that level of access. They think they do. They want, they all want that level of access. Everybody wants a cheat code. You know, I love cheat codes. Everybody wants it. But really, at the end of the day, you know, you're saving yourself in the long run, uh, the, the potential headache. So I hope this is helpful. I hope it's useful. I, you know, these fundamental things are not, they're really not rocket science. They're basic fundamentals. But if you look at how it's not easy to implement it because people, you know, dealing with the change and dealing with culture, um, you have to make some changes and people don't like change. Um, and you have to be able to hold the line and say, look, this is what we're going to do. And try to get that, that top down approval so that you can say, hey, the, the boss said this is what we're going to do. Sorry. You know, he said, you want to fuss? Go talk to him. Right. Um, and maybe we'll talk about that another time. But have a good day and have a good week. Talk to you soon.